Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 54, and this is what our dig team has for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up, Juan Burbanos dug up DOS games backslash PB backslash pin magic. I'm gonna guess some kind of program called Pinball Magic. I got a pinball.exe there. Uh, there's a lot of files. Hmm. Huh? Pinball. EGA, VGA, CGA. I will go VGA. Wanna play with sound? Yes. Well, this looks kind of interesting. That title screen went by really fast, so cycles might be too high or something. How do I play? Okay, so F1 sort of gave me a credit and F2 started it. Well, this is kind of interesting. This kind of remind. Actually, <laughs> I just noticed it's a pretty sm small score counter up the side there. This actually kind of reminds me of cocktail pinball tables. Everybody. I'm sure most people are familiar with the basic shape of a regular pinball machine, but there's also a kind of pinball machine called the cocktail table, because it's literally a pinball machine in a table. <laughs> so you could like set your drinks on the table and stuff, and it's sized like a pretty small table. It's, the machine itself is like the play field is about half the size of what you would get on a regular pinball machine. That's a really big gap between the flippers, though. Also, am I actually like... Oh no, there it goes. So it's a five ball game. Unless I accidentally changed an option or something. Let's try that again. So the gap between the flippers is pretty big. Whoa, and it rolls down really freaking quickly when you, if you've got a trap like that. Maybe it is going a little too fast. I wonder what will happen if I turn the cycles down. Whoa! Now it's playing really slow. I just noticed at the side there it says one franc for one play, so that kind of gives an idea of where this game came from. For some reason, I get this sneaking suspicion this is actually commercial software and this has just been ripped for this collection, probably off of some BBS from somewhere. Yeah, the gap between the flippers is pretty big. It's kind of hard to keep the ball in play in this one. Also, there's something up there that says exit. So I got a funny feeling there might be like more tables. I gotta keep trying to see if I can actually get the ball up there because maybe there is actually more to this than just this one screen. Also, when the ball comes out of that little that little thing up there, there's a very high chance it just goes straight down the middle, which doesn't help. Now that ball just really does not want to go up towards that. Because it there, it says open now, but... Eh. Okay, I've got the exit open. Let's see if I can get the ball up there. Oh, darn it. The nudge didn't help there. At least the exit stays open between balls. And yeah, I actually looped the score counter there, so... Having a score counter with only five digits does seems kind of counterintuitive considering how fastly how fastly <laughs> how fast the score builds up in this game. Nah, I'm that's that's enough attempts. I've already spent ten minutes trying to do this. But um Yeah, so Pinball Magic. Kind of an inter interesting one for sure. Plays really fast and really hard. And given the fact that the game played really badly when I tried to turn the cycles down, I'm going to guess that that's actually the speed it's supposed to play at. <laughs> In any case, not a terrible game by any means, but I don't think you're going to find this on any shareware sites anytime soon. Next up, we have a team dig from Sean E. and Anton Panetta. DOS games backslash arcade 2 backslash scorched. This is almost certainly going to be scorched earth. Yeah, <laughs> but depending on which version it is will depend on if this fails or not. Because I've already taken a look at the most recent version of Scorched Earth, but there were previous versions that had differences, so let's see. Yep, this is actually an older version for sure. 
version 1.0b, so we're actually really old in the versions here. So let's see what was actually different with the original Scorched Earth compared to the newer versions. And clearly it doesn't have the special backgrounds, I don't think. Okay, options seem good, so let's start it up here. Player 1. That would be... Uh, oh, I gotta select. Select person first. And then, so it doesn't even have the triple turreted tank yet. Player 2 will be the computer. Um... We'll make him unknown. And give him that one. Player 3 is also the computer. Also unknown. Uh, I'll give him that one. And player 4, unknown. Oh, there is a triple turreted tank. Okay. So I guess it just doesn't make it available for the player because the player hasn't registered the game or whatever. Oh, there's the talking tags feature too. So, I don't even see any shield info, so I don't even know if the shields are implemented yet or not. Well, at least I remember how to aim. <laughs> of course, it's going really fast at the moment in terms of the, um... Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so apparently I still have my aim. So let's see what the actual store has here. Well, it has the mag deflectors. Well, that's interesting. But I think it's only showing me stuff I can afford right now. So I'm going to say done just so I can build up some more cash to see if there's even more stuff to buy. Okay, one another bat. Whoa! We <laughs> got the funky explosion there. See, it doesn't even seem to have the plasma explosions. Oh yeah, there's actually shields in here. But the uh, status bar doesn't show the shield stuff by default. Which is interesting. So, let's actually buy some shields. Um, how do I do that? Oh, space bar. Okie dokie. Of course, I've got insta-killed. And my explosion hit my attacker, so serves him right. And there goes the dirt spread. I never really liked that ef death effect because it's so hard to to really do anything after it happens. I'm not entirely certain what resolution this is playing at. Looks like it might be um 320 by 400 or something weird like that. You can sort of tell because of how the pixels are wider than they should be. Oh, I'm getting buried again. I hate that. I never did try activating the shields, did I? That's gonna potentially hurt. Yep. Oh, that's it? Game's already over? It's only been five battles. I guess I only set it to five battles. So, yeah, that was an earlier version of Scorched Earth. It has a lot of the same stuff as the versions we're more familiar with, but much more basic in terms of just what's available to set up and everything, so... That's interesting playing an earlier version of it, but obviously if you're going to play Scorched Earth, you're better off playing a newer version than this one. And before we get to Douglas Reno's successful dig, he did have a failed dig, DOS games backslash arcade backslash Galatix, and this one failed for a really simple reason. Yeah, I got a funny feeling about this. Galactix version 1. Yeah, Cygnus Software. I've already covered this on ancient DOS games, so not good. <laughs> year 2019, yeah. So I'm not gonna do this again. So failed dig only because of the fact that I've already covered this game before. Douglas Reno's successful dig is DOS games backslash sports backslash air puck. I'm gonna guess some kind of air hockey type game. BNB.84? That's a weird external file. <laughs> air, not air buck, air puck. Bob Mandel's air puck version 2.0.
This exciting game of air hockey has you try to score against a tough computer opponent. Converted from Macintosh shareware, which probably inspired the Bruder Bun game Shuffle Puck Cafe. You need quick mouse reflexes to succeed. Okay, so I got a feeling this might be using the mouse. Except my mouse cursor hasn't locked onto DOSBox, so... Hmm. Okay, so let's put it neat. Winning total, uh, I don't know, 10. Game speed, 1. Game sound, yes. Whoa. That plays, um... That plays at a really bad frame rate. <laughs> and yes, the cycles are set up. Maybe I need even more cycles. But that wouldn't make sense, because that would make the... Hmm. Well, let's see what happens if I do turn the cycles up. Okay, yeah, you really gotta turn the cycles up for this one. So yeah, it's basically a... Uh, it's basically a sort of 3D air hockey type game. Which throws you back to DOS the moment the game is over. That's kind of annoying. Eh, I don't know. Let's try it again. Let's set the winning total higher just so it doesn't drop me back to DOS as soon. I wonder what happens if I set the game speed to 5. Okay, now there's absolutely no delay, so maybe now I can turn the cycles back down to where I had it. This does not play that well. There's... Okay, first of all, if you move the mouse just a tiny bit, you can end up moving across the entire play field. There's no grace period. The moment it sets up the... Mo okay, how do I explain... Basically what's happening is that there's this huge delay after a score is made, and then when the delay ends, the opponent immediately gets to shoot again, because in air hockey, whoever makes the goal is the person who gets to start with the puck. Start with the puck. Well, that doesn't make any sense, actually. So yeah, you just keep... And during the delay, your mouse movement doesn't show up. So you're still actually moving the paddle during that delay, but you can't see where you're moving it. So you have no idea where your paddle is where your paddle's starting. Although it was playing better with the um, cycles count high and just setting the lowest game speed. So we're going to try that again. And here's another issue that's happening with the mouse controls, is that you do have vertical motion as well, but it's still detecting the mouse cursor beyond the top and bottom that you can move within. Which means if you move the mouse cursor beyond the top or bottom of there, then it ends up like locking it to the bottom or the top, and then you have to really... Yeah, because right now I'm moving the mouse cursor up that entire time moving it up again. See, it takes it takes a moment for the mouse cursor to catch up to where it should be. And you have, like, an actual physical limitation as to where, where something can be. You have to be really careful when you use cursor controls with that to make sure that the actual cursor is staying within those same bounds. I mean, it looks fine, but the frame rate is terrible and it does not play well because of because of the delay between the scores, which just makes it difficult to know where your paddle's going to be, and then the fact that the paddle just doesn't sync well with the mouse because of how the mouse has been programmed, this is not a good air hockey clone.